As we mentioned last night, the Prime Minister has jetted off to Asia for several important international conferences that are taking him to Indonesia, the Philippines and India. Joining me to discuss this and more is the Australian newspaper's foreign editor, Greg Sheridan. Greg, welcome to the program. Yesterday you wrote that most of the Prime there. Minister's activities over there will be entirely useless but it is nonetheless intensely important that he attend. Tell me why. Well, Rita, a lot of uh, jokers in Australia talk about, you know, uh, being close to Asia, but none of them actually do it. You know, all of our betters uh, in the other opinion uh, media, were, uh, their reference group is entirely New York and London. Um, but in Southeast Asia, the thing is just to show up. ASEAN never takes a decision on anything. ASEAN can't do anything. In a way, that's its genius. It never does any harm because it never does anything at all. But it's very insulting to them if you don't show up. And being there does allow you to meet up with lots of the Southeast Asian leaders. The summits themselves are unspeakably boring. They are the most torturous, uh, you know, endurance that any leader has to sit through. The formal bilateral meetings are pretty scripted, but the informal contact that you have with other leaders is very, very valuable. So Albanese is a million percent right to be where he is. We shouldn't ask what's coming out of it. I mean, he released a report today on doing more trade with Southeast Asia. I mean, I guess it'll be like all the other trade reports. It probably won't amount to anything. But, but nonetheless, it might be a Chauncey Gardner quality, but... Just being there is is the right thing to do. Well, I just hope there's some colourful shirts to uh, to entertain us over the next few days. Uh, now, Greg, let me play you some vision of US President Joe Biden exiting the East Room of the White House before the conclusion of a Medal of Honor ceremony honouring a Vietnam War vet. This performance, I've got to say, is just astonishing. This is a man who is not all there. It's quite clear. And look for the uh, bewildered look the female photographer gives the president. Ladies and gentlemen, please join me for the benediction. Most holy God, we thank you again. Oh, oh, Greg, he wandered off before the closing benediction. I mean, do not tell me this man is cognitively sound. No, you're absolutely right, Rita. I mean, allowing Joe Biden to continue in office, much less to run for the presidency again, is really a form of elder abuse. I mean, I think in Donald Trump and Joe Biden, you have two men manifestly unfit to be president. They are the only candidates who the other candidate could possibly beat. You know, Trump is popular with the base because the Democrats have got these phony prosecutions against him, but independent voters hate him. And nobody in America has any confidence in Biden. All the Democrats want him to get out of the contest. I mean, a very interesting theory at the moment is that the Democrats plan to stick with Biden until Trump is the unchangeable Republican nominee, and then Biden will resign gracefully and usher in not Kamala Harris, but Gavin Newsom or Gretchen Mitch, uh, uh, Mitchin or whatever her name is, the the uh, governor of, uh, of Michigan uh, or some, someone like mm. that. But it is absurd. It is absurd that Biden is president of the United States. Well, on Donald Trump, it is being reported that the Democrats have come up with a plan to prevent him from uh, being on the ballot in the first place. Apparently, all this would require is for top state election officials to rule him unfit for office. Uh, could they pull this off, Greg? Look, I, I don't think they can, Rita, honestly. It, 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 is, it is a despicable uh, proposition. Um, 
I, I, I'm no fan of Trump. I mean, a lot of Sky viewers think I'm too, too critical of Trump, but I think Trump is a despicable person and should not be president. But the Democrats are equally to blame as Trump for the debasement of American politics. I think all these legal cases against Trump are a clear abuse of process. They're novel legal theories. They're using laws that were never meant to cover politics. They're gross double standards uh, involved. In each case, Trump's behaviour was bad, but it was not criminal, and it's absurd to pursue him criminally. And they should be trying to defeat him at the ballot box. The, also, the timing of these prosecutions, the, they left it for two and a half years so they could just do it in primary season and in the run-up to the election. Now the idea that they're so scared of him that they're trying to keep him off the ballot. The reason Trump has a chance of winning the presidency is because Biden is so awful and so unpopular. And Democrats should try to defeat Trump honestly at the ballot box, as they did last time. And if they lose, they lose. <laughs> Greg. But this attempt, Greg. To, this attempt to, rig, to rig the system is... It's really crook and it's a very bad moment for American politics. Oh, it's a deplorable moment for American politics, but if they thought they could beat him fair, fair and uh, square, they wouldn't be going to these measures. We wouldn't be seeing politically motivated charges left, right and centre. And uh, I know you're not a fan, but uh, I can tell you there'll be a lot of Americans who are thinking back to those Trump years where the, they had a lot more money in their back pocket than they do now and life was a little bit easier. So I think... Uh, You'll be surprised by what's going to happen in Dublin. I think we're all going to be surprised. Who knows what's happening in the US? Uh, it changes week to week. Before you go, just quickly, I want to ask you about North Korean leader Kim Jong-un. He's about to meet with Vladimir Putin to discuss uh, providing arms to Moscow for its war in Ukraine. Uh, this sounds like scraping the bottom of the barrel, Greg. Well, it is a very concerning development because the only thing North Korea is any good at is producing uh, missiles and nuclear weapons. Now, Russia already has all the nuclear weapons it could need. But, um, I mean, one of the dangerous things about Trump next time is that he, he's in love with Vladimir Putin and he thinks Xi Jinping is sexier than Brad Pitt and no-one in Hollywood is good enough to play him. God alone knows what American policy will be towards Ukraine under Trump. But the world is sorting <laughs> itself into two hostile geostrategic camps. On one side, you've got America and its allies. And on the other side, you've got China, Russia, Iran and North Korea. And, um, you know, Xi Jinping says he has a friendship without limits with Russia. And Kim Jong-un is now in Russia. And I wouldn't be surprised if he did export arms to Russia. And it's Kim Jong-un is a dangerous guy and they're a dangerous, uh, dangerous alliance. Well, again there, Greg, I've got to disagree with you because when Trump was in office, Russia did not invade Ukraine because reportedly Trump said to Vladimir Putin, if you invade, I'm going to bomb Moscow. Now, you may think that's not a sound way to uh, for the US president to speak, but it was but effective. We, we don't know and that we that did actually see, happened, Rita. again, we've, under we've Trump, got to, we've North, got to deal North with the and facts. South Korea. Well, I'm, I said it was reported. No, no, no. Well, we've, the we've facts are that the, the Ukraine the was not invaded we have whilst no Trump idea. was in office. Yeah, yeah, well, okay. the facts and are that the Martians Ukraine was not us. invaded yeah, whilst the, Trump the, the was Martians. in office. And, the, the Martians didn't attack either, but well, I'm not going well, to put that wanna, down You want to Trump's deal in credit. facts, Trump but now said, you're, you're, you're talking Trump about said, Martians. Yeah, yeah, but but the the fact that Putin okay. didn't no, no, invade no, I'm interested Ukraine in this Martians analogy. Go ahead. No, I mean the fact that some you cannot okay. causally okay. attribute well, see, so anything, a non anything that happened to Trump. that. It's well, not logical to say can. something didn't happen, can. therefore if, Trump's if, if a genius. Putin... Well, no, I didn't well, say I, he's a genius. I, I, I don't, don't put I don't words in my mouth. No. I just a statement of fact no, 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 but that you can't Putin, say Putin, didn't Putin did invade not Ukraine. invade Ukraine under Trump. And, well, yes, I can, because it's a statement of fact, as is the statement of fact, that South okay, Korea and North Korea finally did have some meetings under the Trump the administration. No, no, the North Koreans... The North Koreans and the South Koreans have had hundreds of meetings. They had well, meetings if, just if, like if that under Bill Clinton. Donald Trump they had meetings was, just like that under George okay. W. Bush. 
well, let's... Well, let's just ignore that. Let's ignore the Abraham Accords. Let's ignore all the, uh, no, the no, good no. he there did were in real foreign achievements policy in, because no, but, but apparently, you, you, you know, Donald you can't Trump... can't have this discussion. Well, no, no, you, no, because maybe the Martians the were responsible for the Abraham Accords. I don't no, know. No, well, that's ridiculous. Rita, what you're saying no, is no, absolutely we'll ridiculous. Out of time if you're we'll going to have this discussion, you've got to have it seriously. So you can't do it in these short bites. And what you've been saying is utterly ridiculous. Just nonsense. All my columns True. have acknowledged the achievements of Trump in foreign policy. Well, OK, except that any mention of North Korea or Russia is apparently borderline, like a comparison with Martians. You're right. These, this is this uh, issue no, no, that cannot be that's, discussed that's, in a couple of minutes. Let's you're, you're, so kick totally, this off again totally next time. What I said. Greg Sharon, no, no. No, you just said that we need longer to discuss this and I'm agreeing with you. So let's end on a good note, Greg, and thank you for your time this evening.